Hello and well, what is up guys, Rai here and welcome back to some more automation and BMNG Drive. Today we're creating another sporty car, this one's going to be uh, a bit more back in time. We're making a 1950s uh, NASCAR, NASCAR, NASCAR style-ish race car. Uh, it's going to be a bit of a mix between a NASCAR car of the time and a an actual racing car. Of course, lots of racing cars back in the 1950s were like open just open cockpit racers so is it the right word i don't know just open race cars basically this one's not going to be this is going to be pretty much a production car but maybe a race version or some sort of sporty version so we're going to go uh ladder seal space train is doable but this is going to be based off of a production car we could do aluminum maybe a production car it's possible um but then double wishbone i think in like semi trailing room i don't want to go solid axles i really don't this is you know this is going to be based off of Someone of a decent car. It, it, it is a race car after all, and it's, you know, to make that it's probably a higher end version of some sort of car. Uh, now, it's going to be similar to the Hudson Hornet, um, which is a race car. If you guys don't know what the Hudson Hornet is, Google it. Uh, you know, if you guys watch the movie Cars, I've, I've known about the car for a while, but uh, the old Hudson cars are awesome. I'm uh, breaking a big straight six boy. This is going to be a dual red cam four valve, though. This is going to be a bigger straight six boy. Of course, we can't fit front wheel drive. It's going to be a smaller engine. The um, actual Hornet is a 5 liter straight 6. We're going to have a, like, I think we're, I was thinking around a 3.3 3 liter around there. It's going to rev hopefully a bit more. I think the, the Hudson makes about 175 horsepower, so we're going to go for about that. Uh, all cast iron, please. And then we only have cast iron as the option. I could maybe go heavy. No, heavy duty cast actually won't be any better. Uh, we will go a pretty high cam profile and we'll put the compression down to like 7.5 to 1 for now um two barrel twin carburetor performance we can probably go race too to be honest but we'll just go performance uh, we can go race we can go race uh then super leaded please then just long tubular endo mufflers so right off the bat here uh we are already not a strong enough engine uh we can lower the revs here because this is going to be a pretty fast boy 5000 rpm is, is plenty enough for 1950 i think and 180 horsepower and 204 torque that's already decent amounts we can probably increase the exhaust just a bit. Yeah, I mean we are making horsepower at peak RPM, which is not ideal, to be honest. We're not we're not looking ideal. We could go a little higher. Um, we could lower the camera profile too, probably 180 horse. This is honestly like pretty good numbers right off the bat. Just increase the compression ratio. 8.5 is getting up there for pretty high. Nine to one is quite high for the time, but we'll do that I think. Uh, then a bit of better fuel mixture, and then a bit higher on the ignition timing. I think is what we'll do. 198 almost have enough i want to get 200 horsepower 206 could we just do 205 then maybe like i'd be okay as long as it's even numbers 205 and 225 that's pretty good i think that's pretty reasonable for a a sporty race car now we're doing this nice little uh sweeping fastback hatchback kind of coupe thing because this is just a good looking body and we don't want we don't want any negative sweaters there i can go for an actual sedan body or like an actual coupe the coupe is is really ugly though to be honest uh, it's not bad. The back end feels very long, though. I don't know. For like, I, I like how this looks. I like this body shape. Um, definitely an old boy. Uh, we're going to continue on here. So it's going to be a force rear wheel drive manual. It could be a three speed. It could maybe be a four speed. We'll do three. Lock and differential, because why not? I'm not sure if they would have had that, but we'll leave it there for now. And 200 kilometers an hour sounds like a good top speed to start. Now, I'm not too sure what, like, you know, this is cross play. We can do cross play. Sports compound, I guess, seems reasonable. Uh, 150s. These are. Teeny, teeny, teeny tires. 175s. We're still really small. We will space them out just a bit, though. Um, just so it fills in a bit better there. Still steel wheels, 15-inch tires. And we'll max size for now. I'll probably change that. And then interior, just, what, two-seater, basic, none. And then the best safety, because we got to have the best safety. And then we have literally one option for suspension. We'll tune it for sportiness. So right off the bat, we are quite light. We are just 2,600 pounds, approximately. Uh, 0 16 the low 8s, which is faster than the actual production Hudson. I'm not sure where the NASCAR Hudson uh, could do. 0 16 I'm not sure where the engine had either. I know it had the 5 liter straight 6. I'm not sure if it had more horsepower or less. I can't find that out, but we're making our own basically race car, just similarly modeled after that. Uh, with a little bit, a little bit better gearing there. Yeah, we're getting a bit of a, you know, a bit of an oversteer boy. We can fix that probably. We can probably put some sort of wing in this thing. So, um, there's not really much to engineer in this car because there's not much options. This is going to be more of a just a, a partially designing episode and we'll go do some testing and tuning and stuff. So, what I'm going to do now is design the car. Uh, then we will talk about it and then bring it into Beam and G Drive. So, we'll see you guys in uh, just one sec. Hope you guys enjoy this quick build. 
This is the 1950 Brunswick RS Yellow Jacket. It is a 1950s, uh, it's more of a sporty car than a race car, uh, but it definitely has some very, very, very aggressive design elements to it. Uh, there is no time lapse of me building the car. That video file got corrupted, so we're just going to talk about it a bit here and also when we're back in automation. Uh, so initially, of course, it's a two-door coupe. Uh, it's a hatchback, technically, so it's, it's more of like a fastback than a hatchback, even though it is a hatch. Um, you can see it's got dual headlights in the front and dual taillights in the rear, definitely. A lot of circles, a lot of ovals going around, around with this thing. Uh, lots of body lines on this thing, lots of lines and circles and stuff. Um, of course, is the front end here, and now we will jump into automation, go over some design details, and then jump into BeamNG Drive. All right, so this is the Brunswick RS Yellow Jacket. It's a pretty cool name. I like the name a lot. Um, now, yeah, again, like I said, the video file for the actual time lapse of the design was corrupted, and instead of going back and just restarting the entire thing, because I was pretty much done the whole thing, I'm like, you know what? Uh, we'll just talk about it here real quick. Um, so we have a big, almost like an oval-shaped grill on the top here, stretches all the way across the front. But the whole thing is not the grill. Uh, we have some black painted plastic. I mean, this is like you know, I, I guess real cars wouldn't have actual gloss black it'd have like a flat black but this one has gloss because it just looks better um with some bars going across attaching the headlights across the front end uh with the little turn signals attached across as well or smaller turn signals than they're, they're still not little um basically looking at the bottom here so th you can see where the opening of the grill is actually and this is just the uh the headlight housing area basically uh down here you can see uh another secondary grill that opens on the top and bottom quite small but it's it's there uh, with some almost like teeth and some grill uh, just going through that pretty aggressive look in there and we have some little bumperettes there uh, big old bumper lots of chrome wrapping around to the edge there uh, on the hood we have the emblem which I'm not sure what it's supposed to be but it's just a bunch of door handles and some other trim mixed together I thought it looks pretty cool um, this is this is definitely a luxury brand I'm not sure what this is not sure what what I took some design elements from some European cars some American cars uh, etc um, we have some just little chrome emblems there, some little chrome decals basically. Uh, one single windshield wiper, windshield wiper, windshield wiper in the roof with some uh, little uh, roof bulges there as well. And then dual mirrors because this is a luxury car that is a sports car still. Uh, just some simple RS badging and chrome with some black at the bottom there. Simple door handle. And then we have some more design. So following the flow of the bumper, going along the back here, we have some more lines to sort of follow with the design of the front. Lots of lines going on. Um, black and chrome. So black on the top and bottom. We have chrome more black stripes and then chrome more black we have a little bit of an air intake there that's probably not functional it just looks cool this is the 50s after all it doesn't have to be functional now uh, the wheels look quite massive but it is it is a mod to have these white wall tires and it just looks great um to have it the tires have to be quite large which is okay um they are probably probably a bit bigger for than what they should have been and they are staggered uh, tire size which is that's fine, I think. It is it is a high-end car, uh, after all. Uh, 165 front, 175. We, we could probably do 175, even 185, to be honest. I think if we're having staggered, might as well. Because um, I think at the time, probably 165 would probably be a standard street tire. Maybe a bit bigger. This is cross-ply. Uh, not um, regular modern tires, radial tires. Uh, and then going to the back here, so we have a split rear window. With some very interesting, um, basically, spoilers. These are basically wings uh, that just float the body in it. It's very, it's very cool looking. I think this is like the cool feature of the yellow jacket or the RS yellow jacket. I think it looks really cool having these there. And also they're going to help us provide some sort of downforce because without it, this car will have none. Um, which, uh, you know, actual wings weren't used to like the 60s and stuff or 60s, 70s, etc. Uh, for, for a while, like not really commonly. Um, but this is the 50s and they are wild designs back then. So we are uh, flowing with that. Uh, the car emblem a bit more flat on the back there with a single latch in the middle. There is no Brunswick or RS or Yellow Jacket badging anywhere, just the RS badging. This is like the, the sports trim, you know? It doesn't need to show off what it is. It is what it is, you know? There's no Brunswick badging. This is like a luxury coupe, I guess, even though it's a hatchback. I'm not sure. Um, dual taillights, similar to the headlights with a bar stretching across in three angles. Again, different but similar. Of course, it can't be the exact same with some sort of six teeth just sort of sticking out here. I think we have six teeth in the front. We have eight, actually. Well, that's... That's close enough. And at the bottom here, just one single big old exhaust tip. This is a big old can. I'm not sure if that's realistic, but it looks damn good. Um, so that's basically the car. I didn't tweak too much. I actually didn't tweak the air yet at all. Uh, we are creating some sort of downforce here. We have a bit of understeer when we get up into the higher speeds there. Yeah, and we get higher speeds. It's a bit of understeer. A bit lower, we have a bit of oversteer, but I think that'll be fine. We could even probably... No, I think honestly, like the wing angle is fine itself. So what we're gonna do now is just jump into Beam and G Drive. This is creating a hundred pounds of downforce. Uh, we're gonna jump into Beam and G Drive uh, and see how this thing drives. 
All right, guys, so here is the Brunswick RS Yellow Jacket. It transferred over fantastically to BMG Drive. It looks great. Uh, it looks honestly like a car, almost like it could be a BMG. Uh, this is probably one of my favorite design vehicles ever. I really like designing old vehicles or new vehicles. There is no in-between. A um, couple things to note before we do start. This is the automation test track. Uh, this is the old race circuit. We're doing two laps in this beast. I've done a couple test laps. Not, not really, but a couple. Um, so the wheels, they look... Like fairly good size for the time the actual the actual rims, uh, they are quite they're actually smaller than what they look like. This is a tire mod. Take the white walls look as they do, and the wheels are actually smaller. Therefore, the brakes are quite small. So the brakes are a little bit underpowered. We're gonna lock the rear differential and go in first person for this thing. Now the gearing, it is what it is. Um, it is only a three speed, so I, I can't fault the gearing for being terrible, even though it is kind of terrible. First takes us to about 60, and second to about 140. I always botch lap number one, or turn number one, but that's okay. Bit of air here, as I like to do. And we're coming into bend here, nice and slow. It is quite neutral handling. Honestly, there's never really a lot of oversteer. I mean, we have the rear diff locked, so it just does like the oversteer when we're actually driving on the track. But if we didn't have the rear diff locked, it is incredibly neutral and well balanced. Uh, the brakes are the probably the biggest flaw of this car is the brakes. It's got enough power. The gearing also a four speed would have been nice, but you know this is this is still a 1950s car, and I think a three speed was just a bit more you know normal. Getting a little bit squirrely there. I dropped down a second a bit too early. I didn't break long enough, and I dropped down a second too early to try to compensate for that, but... Still a pretty appropriate first lap, around 120, 123, and we're gonna break on the brake, 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 on the brake. Oh my gosh, the brakes are just so bad. I love it, though. This car's got a lot of character. Uh, the brakes are getting a little bit hot, though, 260, so you can tell here uh, the brakes are not uh, up to par with the performance of this car. And on the throttle, we're gonna do a little, bit of, just a little bit of braking here. Be cautious coming to this corner here because this thing is still a little bit unwieldy because uh, lock and diff, which it is helping performance though. It is helping me take these turns a bit better. It's gonna be easy on it though. So right now we're, we're beating the first lap by a few seconds, which is surprisingly bad because. Um, we have a running start, whereas, you know, the, the first time we hit to start off, accelerate. So, definitely not the greatest. Down the second here, nice and early now. On the edge of the course just a bit, we're still going good though. Lost a bit of time there. At 116, I'll take that, a 7.4 second difference, that's not bad, that's not bad, a, a pretty good time, honestly, we, we finished with a 240, which is not the worst, we've gotten worse with uh, some other cars tested earlier, uh, of, like actual player made cars, my own car, which is a Super Coupe Bandit 427, got a 235, which is a muscle car with like 400 horsepower, or three, uh, high 300s, that was a 1970 car, that's a 1950s car, so, it's pretty close, also a Vectra Type SP, which is a Civic Type R competitor of, of the 90s, uh, what else did I make, nothing else that I made it looks like, um, Cold Super 8 Tricks, Sprite, some more muscle cars. So, I think overall, a pretty reasonable time. We're just gonna go free roam here for a second. Just, just cruise around for a minute. Oh, well, I haven't do a shift there, but that's okay. You can definitely cannot shift with the brake. The whole thing just goes back. Honestly, I think it's a pretty appropriate race car for the road. Basically, a street legal race car. Um, without all the decals and gizmos and gadgets and stuff, obviously, but it still looks, I think, pretty period correct. And, you know, obviously, I didn't spend too much time engineering the car, which I never do because I like to. I, I love designing cars. That's what I like doing. I'm actually driving this pretty good from an angle here. Quite cinematic. Overall, yeah, a lot of fun to make this car. A 
We're gonna stop here for a second. So yeah, a lot of fun to make this card. Definitely, uh, it was quite loud for me at least. It's quieter for you guys, but it's so loud for me, it's crazy. Um, so yeah, I love the design of this card. This is one of my favorite design vehicles I've ever made. Uh, and you know, I did spend a lot of time on this one, probably about two, two hours plus design of the car, like two hours in one session sitting there designing it. I think inspiration from, I think some old Cadillacs with some side vents and stuff, uh, some old Mercedes Benz, a little bit of old Mercedes Benz, they look a little wild for 1950s and stuff, but some old Cadillacs, some old Buicks, lots of American uh, design elements, but it does have an original front fascia, I think. I didn't copy anything for the whole front fascia here, I just sort of went with my own design and sort of picked it and chose it. On here, I took a little bit of design elements from, I think Buick and Cadillac, but I made my own thing as well, so it is a... Pretty much a completely original design. Uh, I'm really pissed off though. I didn't make this chrome. I thought I did, but that's okay. A lot of fun. Um, if you guys have an idea for another build, leave in the comments down below. I'm always looking for more ideas, and yours could be next. Also, join the Discord linked in the gosh darn description. Join the Discord. We have weekly challenges with my live streams. Join that. Join the community. There's about 300 of us uh, crazy twin turbos now. Um, so join the community. Link Discord down in the description. Go, 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 go. Um, there's going to be a live stream tomorrow, so make sure to tune in for that. We're going to be testing, uh, I think, we're, what are we doing, rally cars? We're doing uh, D Dakar race cars, basically, so it's going to be very insane. Uh, very, very fast, high-powered cars. Join that as well. Um, you can spit cars today, I guess, but, you know, this mission is tomorrow. So you can join in or watch tomorrow. Uh, it's going to be live streaming, of course, on YouTube. Um, if you guys like the video, leave a thumbs up. It actually helps it a lot. It means a lot to me. I hope you guys are all staying safe. Make sure to stay indoors and stuff. And I hope everyone's being healthy and stuff and having a good week. Um, thank you so much for watching, guys. And as always, I'll see you next time.